Why, hello there. Aren't you a nice looking person? While you're here, why don't you just click this totally legitimate link from Facebook? Yep, just right there. Now log in. Good, good, good. Username, password. Great. Now, wasn't that easy? Something so simple can lead to a whole lot of bad for you, your business, your employees, or even your clients. Clicking on a malicious link can result in a serious data breach, meaning a situation that exposes your personal information to bad guys or hackers. So far in 2023, there have been over 690 data breaches, including a Twitter breach that exposed 220 million records. There have also been 199 known healthcare breaches, 119 educational site breaches, and 88 public sites. And this doesn't even include the breaches that never got reported. So what happens to all your data in a data breach? First, the data is parsed for useful or read profitable information. Things like personally identifiable information, your name, your SIN, your birth date, are packaged and sold on the dark web. According to 404 Media, a full range of information from comprised credit bureaus that will allow full identity theft can be purchased on the dark web for just $15 to $20 per person. Think about that. Someone can buy your identity for less than a week's worth of mocha lattes. After PII, the most common data to be compromised is usernames and passwords. According to data extracted by WizCase between January and September 2022, the cheapest account is Reddit, which goes for about $6 per username and password. TikTok, Pinterest, and X, which is previously known as Twitter, accounts cost about $10, while Discord, Facebook, Instagram, and Snapchat are approximately $15. But passwords from massive data breaches, like we talked about earlier, are often posted for free after one year. Scary, right? So what happens to all those usernames and passwords? Like we said, many of them are sold on the dark web. The bad guys are betting on a simple concept called password reuse. Basically, this means that most people have their email as their username and use the same password on multiple sites. This is classified as password reuse and it makes it really, really easy to steal your information. The hackers are looking for a percentage, say 10% of compromised users won't actually update all their usernames and passwords, even if they are notified of a breach. If you list 100 million usernames and passwords, half of that Twitter breach, 10% or 10 million, well, that seems a little high, so let's just say 1%, 1% or 1 million usernames and passwords are reused by people. Regardless of the password strength, hackers will take that list, use a proxy, and then run some automation to try the list against 20 or 30 of the most popular sites. Then they will add PayPal, banks, payroll services, and other financial sites like popular credit cards. If they get a 1% success rate, that is 10,000 usernames and passwords, 10,000 people that now have their identity compromised. If those accounts include payroll services, the bad guys will then attempt an account takeover to seek immediate financial gain. Well, how do they do that? Well, it's very simple. If it's an employee account, they begin by checking for the next payday, and right before that date, they log in as that employee and update their bank account to deposit the payroll into a bank account the hacker controls. If the account is an administrator, then it gets a lot worse. The administrator account can be used to change all employee direct deposit accounts as well as to run non-standard payrolls. To continue our example, if 1% of our 10,000 accounts are compromised and the bank accounts are changed, with an average direct deposit of $2,275, that would be almost a quarter million dollars stolen. Now, the estimate from start to finish is about 60 hours of work on the hacker's part, with some access to some of the dark web services. So an estimated cost of about $10,000. So that's not really that bad of a payout. Qu quarter million dollars for a $10,000 investment. Don't think this can happen to you. Imagine you're an accountant who reuses passwords on your account. Your information was included in a social media breach. 
When your compromised information was entered into a payroll system, the bad guys successfully gained access and then began to change banking information for multiple employees across multiple companies that you support. From one instance of password reuse, PII was accessed, bank accounts were changed, and additional payrolls were run. Once discovered, all that information needed to be reported to the employees and a public report filed with the privacy office for that province. Trust was eroded, financial loss, and probably business closure, all from a simple case of password reuse. We are aware of this exact case occurring in the payroll industry, and it is happening with increasing frequency. So now that you've seen the worst, what can you do about it? Number one, don't reuse your username and password combinations. Every site you connect to should have a unique username and password combo. The password should be difficult to guess, but easy to remember. We recommend using passphrases or random password generators. In other words, your dog's name and birthday is not going to cut it. I often hear, I have too many passwords to remember. Agreed. Personally, I have over 150 passwords to remember. So get a password manager. Even here at WagePoint, we use a password manager. A password manager is an application that helps maintain and store your passwords for all of your applications and sites. It even has a password generator feature that can randomize passwords for you. You don't even need to remember all your passwords. You just need to remember the one password to access your password manager. And on a side note, most password managers even have browser add-ins so that you can access your password manager from anywhere you use a browser. Number two, enable multi-factor authentication or MFA. This is often also called two-factor authentication or 2FA. MFA is a security measure used to enhance the protection of online accounts by requiring users to provide multiple forms of verification before granting them access. Think of it as a second lock on your front door. It means that you need more than just your password to log in, but also a secondary item like a special code that's sent to your phone. The idea behind MFA is that even if a hacker somehow manages to obtain your username and password, they would still need the other authentication factor to gain access. This significantly reduces the risk of unauthorized access since they would need physical possession of that second factor, which is much harder to acquire. WagePoint recommends enabling MFA on all accounts, both employees and administrators, we also use the free Google Authenticator app, but please note, you can also use the Authy Authenticator as well as the Microsoft Authenticator. MFA is widely used in various applications and services, including online banking, email accounts, social media, cloud services, and more. Its primary benefits include increased security. MFA greatly reduces the risk of unauthorized access, even in cases where passwords are compromised. It helps provide protection against phishing. Even if a threat actor tricks a user into revealing their password through a phishing attack, they would still need the second authentication factor to gain access. Compliance. Many industries and regulatory frameworks require the use of MFA to protect the sensitive information. And reduce impact of data breaches. In the event of a data breach where passwords are exposed, MFA helps mitigate those potential damages because the threat actor would still need that second factor. Overall, multi-factor authentication is a crucial security measure that adds an extra layer of defense against various types of cyber threats and unauthorized access. Number three, pay attention to online notices of account changes. WagePoint sends email notifications each time an employee's bank account is changed in our system. If the employee makes the change, an email is sent to the administrator to verify the change. We recommend the admin compares the new details against a void check or other bank account confirmation from the employee. If the administrator is the one to make the change, an email is sent to the employee to notify them that the change has occurred and to contact the admin if it was not authorized. If you expect you or an employee has been a victim of an account takeover, what are your next steps? First, alert WagePoint as soon as possible. We can lock down accounts and help check for unusual activity. Second, please change your password. 
Third, if you haven't already enabled MFA, do it now. And due to the fact that it's an account takeover, we suspect you haven't enabled MFA. And finally, check through your account and review any recent changes. If you see something out of the ordinary, please follow up with WagePoint to do a deeper investigation. Thanks for viewing our video today. Remember, security is everyone's responsibility. As someone who manages payroll for others, we hope you feel an extra level of comfort knowing that there are steps you can take to help keep everyone's important information safe.